start this video, we will need to get an understanding of the role that military veterans specifically play in the programs and the operations that are going on here. So this comes from a page called BuckeyeFirearms.org. This is an article from, apparently, according to the article, July 16th, 2024. And the title, or headline, is VA, created by Congress, says it would not comply with pro-gun legislation. Now, VA stands for Veterans Affairs, the Department of Veterans Affairs. Earlier this month, the Subcommittee on Disability Assistance and Memorial Affairs of the House Veterans Affairs Committee held a legislative hearing on a number of proposed bills that would change various procedures and standards for how the Department of Veterans Affairs, VA, does business. The VA, of course, is a creation of Congress, as are the statutes that empower guide and fund its activities. Now, that's not entirely true. In actuality, the Department of Veterans Affairs is a separate subcategory within the U.S. Code, part of the U.S. Code government, of which Congress has its own subsection. So, in fact, the Department of Veterans Affairs is completely, um, it's completely separate from Congress. It has its own alleged jurisdiction as far as the code goes, and Congress has its own alleged jurisdiction as far as the code goes, jurisdiction being essentially spoken oath. Even though we use that word wrong, now we use it to mean area of operation, or AO. Now, the entirety of this article is not important to this video, so we will look at one particular section. So here, it states um, that in its determination to cast as broad a regulatory net as possible, the ATF specifically mentioned the definition of mentally incompetent person used by the VA in administering its own disability benefits. So those are two sections, the ATF Alcohol Tobacco Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or some call it the BATF. They have a particular section of control and area of operations according to the U.S. Code, which is different from the Department of Veterans Affairs. However, they're using, essentially speaking, the same definition. That definition, ATF noted, covers persons who, because of injury or disease, lack the mental capacity to contract or manage their own affairs. Hence, you get the word veteran affairs, or veterans affairs. The affairs of veterans being managed by that department. Such persons, according to VA's underlying statutes, can be assigned a fiduciary, in quotation marks, to manage their benefits. Now, the next document we're going to look at here uh, has a more comprehensive and similar definition and is likely uh, rel relative to the origin of where that definition comes from, the origin of that definition. So where they get their definition is... Uh, available on older documentation. Now, the important element here that this is focusing on is the ability to deprive veterans firearms, thus producing the security of the state, as it were. This all revolves not just around security, but the security of the state is a very important component. And the idea of mentally defective of being mentally defective or mentally incompetent provides the pretext to remove firearms from those who know how to use them, those who are trained to use them in a warfare scenario. So we understand the perspective here. And the approach to veterans is very important because of that training, whereas the majority of the population might not have that training that those in the military do. Thus, they have to specifically focus on removal of the problem of veterans for their control mechanisms. But there are other components to that. And through this video, we are going to get a comprehensive and corroborative viewpoint using various sources to know who is doing this what their real ultimate purpose is, and we are going to start with by understanding the approach to the veterans, but that this in fact relates to everyone within the country and in the world as well. Now, that definition of mentally defective or incompetent, unable of 
making one's own contracts and things, that can be found in this document, State of Pennsylvania Lunacy Law of 1883, as amended by the Act May 7th, 1889, and is further amended by a supplement passed the General Assembly of 1893. Now, this is copyrighted from 1907 out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and we won't read the rest of this very long title. Here at the bottom of the page, it states, if the person against whom the proceedings are taken shall demand in writing prior to the decision of the court on such application, trial by jury shall be thereupon be the duty of the said court to award an issue framed to determine the question of fact involved and such trial shall be granted. Section 5. From and after decree that the person against whom the same is entered is insane or so weak in mind that he or she is unable to take care of his or her property. Sound familiar? Like that thing we just read? Said person shall be wholly incapable of making any contract, as they stipulated in that article there, or gift whatever, or any instrument in writing, and the entry of such decree shall be notice of such incapacity, and said person shall be a ward of the court appointing such guardian. So first they get veterans to admit they're mentally defective, and then they get a guardian appointed on their behalf, or a fiduciary, whichever word you wish to use, but same thing. And that person's job is to administer the affairs of the mentally defective person. But it goes beyond that. The guardian so appointed shall have precisely the same powers and be subject to the same duties as a committee on lunacy in the state of Pennsylvania. The court appointing such guardian shall have the full power over the same. So in this case, the Department of Veterans Affairs has power over the guardians that they appoint to administer those affairs. In directing an allowance for the said ward and for the support and maintenance of his wife or his or her children in the education of his or her minor children and shall enter a degree of decree of sale, mortgaging, leasing, or conveyance upon ground rent of the real estate or any part thereof of the said ward. Whenever in the opinion of the court it is necessary for the support and maintenance of the said ward or his family or the education of his or her minor children or the payment of his or her debts or where it is for the interest and advantage of the said ward that the same shall be sold, mortgaged, leased, or let on ground rent. Now the rest of this is not entirely important because the main concept here is that when somebody signs any paperwork with the Department of Veterans Affairs stipulating their mental defectiveness, then that Department of Veterans Affairs appoints a ward or guardian. They become a ward. They get a, a guardian appointed over them who then can administer not only their affairs, but those of their spouse and their children. So this brings us to the U.S. Code 38 U.S.C. Uh, Veterans Benefits, Part 6, Acquisition and Disposition of Property, Chapter 85, Disposition of Deceased Veterans' Personal Property, Subchapter 2, Death While Patient of Department Facility. Whenever any veteran admitted as a veteran or dependent or survivor of a veteran receiving care under the pen penultimate sentence of Section 1781B of this title shall die while a member or patient of any, in any facility or any hospital while being furnished care or treatment therein by the department and shall not leave any surviving spouse next to kin or heirs entitled under the laws of the descendants domicile to the descendants personal property as to which such person dies intestate all such property including money and choices of action owned by such person at the time of death and not disposed of by will or otherwise shall immediately vest and become the property of the United States as trustee for the full use and benefit of the general post fund. Here and after the subchapter referred to as the fund, a trust fund prescribed by section 1321A, 45 of title 31. So when we understand this, it doesn't actually matter whether they have a next kin or spouse because if they're mentally defective, then they are a ward and they have a guardian appointed to them who can administer their affairs. Such person cannot make contracts because they're mentally defective. And thus, with that in mind, their property can be seized by that guardian under the guardian's own volition and put into this fund. So now we come to the same title, 38 Veterans Benefits, uh, and Chapter 85, Subchapter 2, Section, or Subsection, anyway, 8528, Investment of the Fund. 
Money in the fund, not required for current disbursement, may be invested and reinvested by the Secretary of the Treasury in interest-bearing obligations of the United States or in obligations guaranteed as to both principal and interest by the United States. Now, I went to a particular meeting in my locale titled New Veterans Meeting Connection West, and there is a address, street address there. It says, this is not a recovery meeting, this is a veterans helping veterans meeting. And then there's... Uh, there's no apparent connection on this flyer to any group, organization, or entity. However, when I went to the meeting, it was like all veteran meetings I ever go to, they always focus specifically on veterans' disability benefits. That's because when somebody signs up for veterans' disability benefits, especially when there is a mental component there, they sign themselves as mentally defective. Department of Veterans Affairs appoints a ward or uh, appoints a guardian, they become a ward, of course. Department of Federal Affairs appoints a guardian or fiduciary. Now that individual signs contracts on their behalf, is able to pull money from that fund under the name of the person who signed themselves up as mentally defective. And when they pull that money from the fund, they can in fact pay themselves and the department for expenses and give a small portion of that, of course, to the veteran where they, in fact, are making a lot more money on that person's, under that person's name, basically. Oh, not only that, they can also administer the affairs of that person's family, all their estates. They can steal everything and put it into that fund, of course. And they can take their firearms. That's a big one. Now, let's look into the groups and organizations that are behind this particular meeting, this example here, and we, I guarantee, we will find this theme through further research, and anybody else who dis so desires will be able to find this same scheme specifically behind the defectiveness of veterans or the, the propagation of that idea in order to point guardians over veterans. But also, this has to do with control of the populace at large and the threat of force in enforcement, right? The threat of force to enforce the law, the U.S. Constitution, against them. And just to clarify, when we look through these documents, we will find, as always, that there is a foreign hand behind all of it. So that place on the veteran flyer was listed as Connection West. And this is a, now an event center, but used to be a school. That's very important. So under their list of community connections, or their affiliates, as it were, we find Victory Center. Victory Center is a nonprofit organization that provides food assistance to people in need. The pantry collects food through a partnership with Mid-Ohio. Food is then sorted, organized, and distributed to those in need. The pantry aims to provide nutritious food to individuals and families struggling to, struggling to put food on the table. We collaborate with other community organizations to identify people in need and ensure they receive the help they require. The pantry is run by volunteers who are passionate about helping others and making a positive impact in their community. The work of Victory Center is essential in providing basic needs to those who need it most. So that's what they say. And it is very important to notice the name there, Victory Center. Then we have New Story School. New Story School is an educational organization comprised of special education schools in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Virginia. New Story Schools in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Rivermont Schools in Virginia offer an academic learning environment integrated with behavior support services for students ages 5 through 21 experiencing social, emotional, educational, and behavioral challenges. As an out-of-district educational placement, we work hand-in-hand -hand with family school districts and our partners to create an individualized program unique to each student. Next, we have Juvenile Courts. Fairfield County Juvenile Court made a commitment in 2021 to become a Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, JDAI, court. In 2022, the court began implementation of a variety of initiatives to provide for or enhance the foundation needed for national initiative JDAI, supported by the Anne E. Casey Foundation. It's one of the nation's most successful and widespread juvenile justice system reform initiatives. The focus of JDAI is to reduce reliance on juvenile detention, where youth have often been needlessly detained with long-term negative consequences for both public safety and youth development. Then we have Bottoms Up Diaper Bank. Bottoms Up Diaper Bank is a nonprofit organization founded in 2018 by Tim and Joe Welsh with a mission to provide clean, dry diapers to families in need in Central Ohio. 
The organization is born out of Tim and Joe's love for each other, their faith, and their desire to make a difference in their community. Since its inception, Bottoms Up has delivered more than 3 million diapers to over 70 food pantries and child care facilities in 16 countries in Ohio. Counties. Haha. <laughs> Ensuring that families have access to diapers they need to keep their children clean, dry, and healthy. So, it's very obvious that this veteran uh, group, which was formed at this place called Connections West, has a particular focus on children. Now, when we look at the creepy profiles for their team, we have Burbridge Cook, Jason Wolf, Jenna Cook, and Samantha Green. So as far as the name goes, Connection West on their business filing, of which we have the principal office in Lancaster, Ohio, it states under their purpose, Connection West is being formed for the purpose of operating a youth and family education center for low-income and at-risk individuals, as well as any other lawful purpose to include but not limited to a food pantry, youth center, disaster relief program, and after-school program. That disaster relief is a big one, considering my last video, which was all about the fact that they instigate disasters for the purpose of cashing in in many different ways, and also in insulating their control and eliminating problems and a whole bunch of other things. So this place right there, right here, would likely be considered a temporary shelter in which a high casualty event, which they, of course, orchestrate, will lead those people to their control. But first, in order to do that, they have to eliminate the element of veterans, and they do this by rendering them mentally defective or getting them to, under fraudulent pretense, admit to being mentally defective so that they can then administer their assets and, of course, remove their firearm. Now, under this uh, filing for Connection West, we have Timothy Teague, not, in fact, um, Burbridge Cook, which was listed as the director. Instead, it's Timothy Teague. And the address is 4000 Coon Path Road, Carroll, Ohio. And then we also have someone named Aaron Bagley. And on the signatory page, we see that it was likely filled in uh, electronically because the signature page has just Aaron Bagley and Timothy Teague, their name spelled out. Instead of print name, where you would put print name, which would be Aaron Bagley and Timothy Teague, there is in fact no actual signature on this document. Next, we have somewhere called Community Connections Church. Now, the connections is spelled with an X, and in this case, the X is highlighted as in capital. Now, this is out of Troy, Miami, Ohio. And it states religious and educational services by providing public worship and religious instruction. So that's what the purpose for this particular entity is. Next, we have Global Connections Incorporated, also spelled with an X. And this is out of Columbus, Ohio, Franklin County. And the purpose is to provide administrative and marketing assistance to emerging businesses and global markets. And for any on all other purposes for which a corporation may be formed pursuant to the Ohio General Business Corporation Law. One has to wonder if this entity may be behind the business filings that we're looking at, at least as far as the global connections with an X goes. Then out of England, we have a company called Ackerman 225 Limited. Changed their, name on the, changed their name on the 2nd of August 2000 to Connections with an X West of England Limited. Also, we have a company out of the UK called Connections Housing, also spelled with an X, by the way, LTD. Now, uh, on the list of subscribers, they have something called Butterfly Housing LTD and London & Co. UK LTD. So there's a connection, ha ha ha, guess with an X here, to the housing uh, element. Then, out of Ohio, we have Blue Sky Meeting Connections LTD. LTD, of course, is limited, which is the European version of the LLC. Now, this is out of Canal Winchester, Ohio, which is very close to Lancaster, out of Fairfield County. And the name on it is Jerry R. Hatton. However, that 
name their blue sky, where blue and sky are capitalized, but they are one word. And then we have connections with the X. So now we have a company called Blue Sky, their address being bsky.social, and it's a social media platform. So Blue Sky, as we see, has the symbol of a butterfly. Right? Seen the connection there yet? Haha. <laughs> Blue Sky is a social app that is designed to not be controlled by a single company. We're creating a version of social media where it's built by many people and still comes together as a cohesive, easy to use experience. So we do need to essentially um, decipher that first paragraph. What it means by it's not controlled by a single company, instead it's controlled by a couple different companies or rather a series of holding companies which many would call shell companies, to hide the original controller. And also, the many people they're talking about are juridical entities, because people can be natural or fictitious, otherwise known as juridic people. And we've done this by building Blue Sky on an AT protocol, an open source toolbox for building social apps that can talk to each other. We want modern social media and public conversation online to more, more like the early days of the web when anyone could put up a blog or use RSS to subscribe to several blogs. We believe this will unlock new area, new era of experimentation and innovation in social media. So far, so good, right? Except not, because what they're trying to do is far more sinister than what they're pretending they're trying to do. So for the understanding uh, essentially the uh, overall picture the uh, apparent head as it were the understanding of where this stuff comes from and what the aims are the best place to look would be the code of canon law book five the temporal goods of the church here we have to pursue its proper purposes. The Catholic Church, by innate right, is able to acquire, retain, administer, and alienate temporal goods independently from civil power. Proper purposes are principally to order divine worship, to care for the decent support of the clergy and under other ministers, and to exercise works of the sacred apostolate and of charity, especially toward the needy. Here, the universal church in the apostolic see. The particular churches, as well as any other juridic person, as I said person, people, public or private, are subjects capable of acquiring, retaining, administering, and alienating temporal goods according to the norm of law. Under the supreme authority of the Roman pontiff, ownership of goods belongs to that juridic person which has acquired them legitimately. All temporal goods which belong to the universal church, the apostolic see, or other public juridic persons in the church are ecclesiastical goods and are governed by the following canons, and their own statutes. The temporal goods of a private juridic person are governed by its own statutes, but not by these canons unless other provision is expressly made. In the following canons, the term church signifies not only the universal church or the apostolic see, but also any public juridic person in the church unless it is otherwise apparent from the context or the nature of the matter. So two words to notice here are universal church and apostolic see. So now we're going to go ahead and look at who owns that particular property, uh, which is where the Connections West entity is located, as well as where that particularly interesting veterans group was formed. That veterans group, which apparently has no legitimate connection to any organizations or structures, but seems very determined to get veterans to sign up for disability benefits as somebody told me in church in the, <laughs> the church in the um veterans group is that if you don't sign up for disability benefits as a veteran then you're leaving money on the table quote unquote now according to this the owner the current owner is victory hill church at 4000 coon path road which is the same address of carroll ohio that was listed for the Teague, who is, in fact, the name listed on the Connection West document. Here, under the sales section, apparently, this place was sold to Victory Hill Church by the Board of Education. Now, we'll go to that address, 4000 Coonpath Road Northwest, 
is the addition there, Carroll, Ohio. And this, again, was the address listed on the Connection West document with under the name Teague and is the, the address listed for the Victory Hill Church of God as the owner of this particular address. Now, it was sold to the Victory Hill Church of God, apparently, by the Lancaster Church of God. Now, when we go to the business filing, find Lancaster Church of God with that same address, 4000 Coon Path Road, under the name Stephen J. O'Toole as a statutory agent. Now, this particular paperwork was filed in 2002. Now, here we have the name change from October 4th, 1999, name of corporation, Lancaster Church of God, certificate of amendment by shareholders or members. So the name was changed in 1999, yet on that previous filing from 2002, the name Lancaster Church of God was used. Now, the original document for the Articles of Incorporation state the appointment of statutory agent, the undersigned Lancaster Church of God, an Ohio corporation not-for-profit with its principal office in Lancaster, Fairfield County, Ohio, hereby appoints Charles E. Reed, a natural person, resident in the county in which the undersigned has its principal office as its statutory agent upon whom any process, notice, or demand required or permitted by a statute to be served upon the undersigned may be served. The complete name and address of said statutory agent is Charles E. Reed, and there's the address, and this document is dated June 12, 1987. Now, under the Articles of Incorporation for the Lancaster Church of God, the name of the corporation shall be Lancaster Church of God. The place in Ohio where the principal office of the corporation is to be located is 1415 or 1415 Cedar Hill Road, Lancaster, Fairfield County. The purpose or purposes for which said corporation is formed are to conduct worship services of the Lancaster Church of God in accordance with its rules, regulations, practices, and customs, and to acquire, construct, own, maintain, and provide a place of worship for the members of the Lancaster Church of God and others, and to promote and spread the gospel of the Lancaster Church of God and of the Christian religion, and to engage in all types of activities to promote the spiritual welfare of all men in accordance with the principles of the Lancaster Church of God and the Christian religion, and to do any and all things necessary and incident there too. So let's go ahead and look at that address, 1415 Cedar Hill Road, 1415 Cedar Hill Road. The owner is listed as Cedar Hill Baptist Church, LLC. Now the sellers for this particular location, we have one, the Church of God from 1992. Then we have the Lancaster Church of God. Lancaster Church of God Incorporated, Lancaster Southside Baptist Church, and then finally, Cedar Hill Baptist Church, LLC. So when we go and look at the business filings for the Lancaster Southside Baptist Church, this document is from 2003. Here we find the name was changed, and this is signed and dated for 2007, to the Cedar Hill Baptist Church. So in fact, the Southside, Southside Baptist Church is the same entity as the Cedar Hill Baptist Church. So I guess they sold themselves the property. Now, when we go to the Articles of Incorporation for the Lancaster Southside Baptist Church, it stipulates under the objectives to be a dynamic spiritual organism empowered by the Holy Spirit to share Christ with as many people as possible in our church, in our community, and throughout the world. They get that universal church bend to it. To be a worshiping fellowship experiencing an awareness of God, recognizing his person and responding in obedience to his leadership, and experiencing increasingly meaningful fellowship with God and fellow believers. To help people to experience a growing knowledge of God and man. To be a church that ministers unselfishly in love to all persons in the church, in the community, and in, in the world. In Jesus' name, to be a church whose purpose is to be Christ-like in our daily living by emphasizing total commitment of life, personality, and possessions to the Lordship of Christ. Notice that last section there, and possessions, such as the alienating of goods on behalf of the universal church. Now, when we come to the appointment of statutory agent, we notice the uh, place 
12 1255 Ridge Road out of Lancaster. And we notice that this document is signed by uh, essentially different names from the, the other uh, listing. However, when we come to the document for Victory Hill Church of God, we have a name down here, Barney Cook. Now, it's a little bit difficult to understand from that signature, and this was dated 2002. So, when we look at a different filing, SCF Firearms Training Incorporated, we have a Barney Cook listed at 36050 Smith Chapel Road, Logan, Ohio. Now, when we go to the filing for Smith Chapel Farms Incorporated out of Logan, Ohio, it states to perform legal for-profit operations, including breeding, buying, and selling livestock, producing crops, and maintaining farmland. And there we have that signature again, Barney Cook, and this is dated 2008. We also have the signature Molly Cook. Next, we have the document Cook Family Holdings, LTD, and the purpose is to control and maintain properties. Now, the name under this particular uh, document is Barney Cook at 36050 Smith Chapel Road, Logan, Ohio. In addition, from this document dated 2008, which would be December 15th, we have Barney Cook and Molly Cook. Next, we come to a document called Alco Incorporated. Under UST Environmental Contractor, 8374 Lancaster Newark Road, Baltimore, Ohio, which is in Fairfield County. And we have the name Burbridge Cook Sr. This dated the 14th of January, 2009. And we have Molly Cook, and it just states legal business operations for profit. However, Alco Incorporated is listed out of Logan. Hocking County, Ohio. Now from this document, January 14th, 2009, states the following amendments to Alco Incorporated ownership structure will be enacted immediately. Amendment 1. Due to Burbage Cook Sr.'s age compared to wife Molly Cook and the intent to further the business with her direction and develop lifelong employment opportunities for their children, the ownership will be changed to grant Molly Cook majority ownership and control from this date forward. Mr. Cook, who has been sole owner since the buyout of, a of Al Pierce, I believe, or A.I. Pierce, will retain 49% ownership and focus his attention on operations and sales. Ms. Cook will gain 51% ownership and focus her attention on finance and procurement. Mr. Cook resides as CEO and will remain President of Operations and Chief Operations Officer. Molly Cook will assume the duties of Chief Executive Officer and Principal. Molly will remain active as secretary treasurer of the corporation and oversee all financial activity. All officers have signaled approval by voicing A or I when asked who approves of the resolution to grant Molly Cook majority ownership for the benefit and legacy of the corporation. Amendment 2, Alco Incorporated intends to use the fictitious name doing business as UST Environmental Contractor Incorporated exclusively on motor vehicle titles, legal documents when accepted, and employment solicitation and advertising. This move will enhance name slash brand recognition for the corporation. All present responded I when asked to vote in favor of the resolution by answering I if you are in favor of the resolution or nay if you oppose the resolution. Those present include Burbridge Cook Sr., Molly Cook, Justin Cook, Burbridge Cook II. Then under UST Environmental Contractor, Alco Incorporated, we have that address 36050 Smith Chapel Road, Logan, Ohio, Hawking County. Now, we have the document Alco Incorporated with the uh, registered agent listed as Burbridge B. Cook, or at least the incorporator. The uh, acceptance of appointment for agent is a different name. <laughs> but here we notice the uh, Burbridge with the B. Cook instead of the Burbridge Cook Sr. or Bur Burbridge Cook II. 
So that's interesting. And this document is out of Dayton, Ohio, or at least that's where the registered agent currently is located. And this brings us back to that document for Connection West, Timothy Teague. Well, actually, technically speaking, this is a different document for the same entity. And here we have the name Burbridge Cook with 35294 Smith Chapel Road, Logan, Ohio. Now, also, we have a document called Pine View Estates Development Company under a certain Ralph Cook. Business address is listed as a P.O. box. And the physical address of the Ralph Cook is listed out of Seville, Ohio. Now we have Hillcrest Home Remodelers Incorporated by Ralph Cook out of Cleveland. And the name of former, former agent being Richard Cook. This dated 1991. Uh, we have a business filing from 2012 under Ralph Cook called Equestrian Valley Farm, LLC. And this one is at a different address out of Mansfield, Ohio. Now this comes back around under the First Apostolic Church out of Lancaster, Ohio, with the name listed as an R.G. Cook and the address listed off Route 1 out of Lancaster, Ohio. Now notice that word there, First Apostolic Church, as in the Apostolic See. This document is dated 1968. Now here we see the name Ralph G. Cook. Imagine that. Now when we come to the filing for Apostolic Church, or the first Apostolic Church, mind you, out of Lancaster, Ohio, this document dated 1979. We have the two names, James E. Rome and Dwight Killenbarger. And this is a certificate of amendment to the article stating that the name of the corporation be changed from First Apostolic Church to the New Life Christian Church Center. So when we go to the business filings for the New Life Christian Center International, Incorporated, this document filed out of Columbus, Ohio, Franklin County. The purpose is to establish and oversee place of worship, right? How about the Apostolic See? Mm-hmm. Conduct the work of evangelism in evangelism worldwide. Create departments necessary to support missionary activities and to license and oversee minister the gospel. So if we go to a different place, of which there are many, called New Life Christian Center. This is, however, not out of Lancaster, Ohio. States uh, Pastor Gary King. Gary King serves as an elder amongst a team of elders at the New Life Christian Center in Selena, Ohio, a church they founded in 1972. Gary is one of the founding directors of Apostolic Team Ministries International. He also serves as a member of the Council of Apostolic Fathers of ATM. So there's a pretty strong pattern there, which of course relates to the alienation of temporal goods under the Vatican Code. And they hide behind very many different layers, different uh, cat's paws, as you will, to hide who they really are, because essentially speaking, they're enemy agents occupying sovereign territory uh, and usurping the rule of law, legitimate rule of law. But essentially stealing people's stuff and getting them to, uh, or, or getting them to break their oaths, because when somebody is listed as mentally defective, they can't contract them for themselves, and therefore it removes all, all of their oaths and contracts, or attempts to anyway, that such a person would have made when they enlisted or commissioned in the military or any group otherwise, thus essentially absolving them of the requirements or duties as these people would essentially argue. So when we go and look at some of those entities that are listed uh, under the Connections West, to essentially go back to what we were looking at before. Uh, we have the Bottoms Up Diaper Bank, which is the name of the registrant is Bottoms Up Diaper Drive. So isn't that interesting? You have a fictitious entity registering another fictitious entity, and it just says to collect and distribute diapers to needy mothers, and there it has a address in Lancaster. So when it comes to that other 
uh, thing that they have. We have the New Story Schools Ohio. And the name of the registrant is Holland Learning Center, LLC, and states special education. Now, the address, interestingly, is 23 Walker Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland. Hmm. Yet, the title is New Story Schools, Ohio, and the title of that uh, entity of Community Connections under Connections West was New Story Schools. And the name for Holland Learning Center, LLC, is Paul Volosov. So that's interesting. They have a change-up of names going on here with these juridical entities. Now, if you look up the filing for the Holland School, Holland Learning Center, LLC, it also states special education. However, the address is listed out of Columbus, Ohio, at 2540 Billingsley Road. And if we look under the signature space, which is inaccurate, it states Holland Learning Center, it's not actually the signature. And the name of by is Jason R. Ramaj. So that's odd. Not to mention there's no actual signature there. And that should be located in print name. The signature space, I suppose, left blank if this is being done online. But that's um, one of many anomalies that we find through looking through this paperwork of fictitious entities.